Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Yesterday was one of those rare days where you didn't get a video up on any of the three channels. It was basically moving and everything. It, it's been pressing, but we try to do our best to keep you guys updated. Indeed, we do. And, and we even usually uh, make videos on Christmas, so it's really rare that we don't get a video out. No, but just with driving thousands of miles and, you know, you, you, you get it. You guys yeah. get it. I know you guys have been there, too. But make sure you are subscribed to all three channels. Each one's going to have unique videos up. They all go up on Patreon and Ko-Fi, of course. So we see a lightning strike has ignited a massive fire. This is at a refining plant in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Now, Lake Charles gets hit a lot with, it seems like it's gotten hit in a... Uh, more than most places when it comes to hurricanes. And this is really not the first time I've seen this down in this area either. But a lightning strike? Hmm. Act of nature, act of God, so to speak. Or, you know, what's really going on? I know. You got to always question now. You can't just assume lightning strike. It's a lightning strike. Even though this did feel natural, but maybe I'm just picking up the natural plasma of things. It still might have been triggered. Yeah, but, you know, there also was a second um, same sort of scenario that happened in the same area. So there was a second fire. Now, w w was it related to this one? It, it did end up with a mandatory evacuation for a 1.5 mile radius. You know, again, Louisiana is kind of like the tale of two states. The southern half is packed with people and also with industry. And the northern half uh, doesn't have quite as much going on, to say the least. But when we're talking about this area, when we're talking about, say, Houston and the Texas coastline, oh, there it's just loaded with oil. It's loaded with targets in, in a wartime scenario. Yeah, it, it is. Unfortunately, that's where we're looking at. And, and with the technology these days for them to really target something, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's fairly easy. It's a, That's sad. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. And not a day goes by in Russia without fires, right? Russia. The roof of the Central City Hospital in Novosibirsk is currently on fire. All patients being evacuated. You know, again, and this is the part where people that will just lash out and, and blame every single Russian citizen or every single Chinese citizen or, or whatever citizen it is they want to lash out against you know it's the people that are really in most cases they, they're totally unknowing pawns I, they most people have not had a clue of what's really going on and they just believe what they're told blindly and and that's really a sad but but it is a reality it's sad but it's it is a reality but here in today's theme is going to be i think people are really waking up uh, to a critical juncture which is wonderful <clears throat> but it's going to make it more dangerous too because if people wake up to the point where the control system itself becomes the obvious source of all that's going on and they're no longer getting us to blame each other then it becomes uh, a totally different scenario and like a wounded animal they'll do whatever they have to do you know they will and if i can just direct you back to that um that story about the black ants and the red ants who live so peacefully in a jar and somebody a human or something picks up the jar and they shake it well those ants they go after each other they think one another they think they're the enemy and i wish there could just be like a permanent reminder sticker with everyone with that whenever we see these things going on there's another entity picking up this peaceful jar and just shaking the snot out of it it's not nice not nice no and and still obviously the control grid is still under the control of these uh dark forces which use division to keep pushing forward their agenda but of course we send our prayers to the people all over the globe that you know knowingly or unknowingly just simply you know at best pawns not even really pawns in this you know and when you look at the controllers the real controllers they kind of view humans as as ants on the sidewalk that they're not even going to try to avoid stepping on mm -mm. yeah it, it it's sad 
It is, but that's the reality. We have to recognize what we are facing. China defends buzzing American warship and accuses the U.S. of provocation. As a Chinese warship went and told to, this is two um, <clears throat> NATO uh, U.S. allied ships that were crossing the Taiwan Strait. And a Chinese warship came in and said to change direction. And they weren't changing direction and went to go ram them. And in, at the last moment, it turned away before making impact. You know, again, it could be the decision of somebody at a much lower level, such as the commander of a ship, an individual ship, that literally triggers the war at any time. This is the reality. They've set everything in motion. The, they, the controlling uh, matrix, they're just waiting for an accident. And, you know, again, they'll, they have certain timelines they want to have met, but if an accident happens and it speeds it up, yeah, you know, they'll go with that. You know, and, and it is, it's just a matter of a split second decision. You know, what if someone did not decide to ease up on the, on the gas pedal? What if someone else jumped in the way because they wanted to make sure that ship was going to, you know, these are very just split second decisions, which can change the whole planet. And meanwhile, we have buses filled with illegal unvetted aliens departing the jungle, again, making their way up to the U.S. and going through Panama, going through Costa Rica. And so many of them are from China and all these other countries. It's pretty obvious what's going on. <clears throat> and this person is saying how he hears gunshots, which he does not hear gunshots in, in Costa Rica as often as he used to in L.A. or San Diego. But these are different times. And this war is being totally set up with still so much of, of the world not understanding the setup. And you have migrants staging pavement protests outside London Hotel demanding private rooms and better Wi-Fi. Uh, yes, and you know we've heard from our own family members back in uh, the tiny little town we were staying uh, in, in Nevada, that there's some illegal migrants that have just made a permanent camp even there. Again, they're being spread out to even towns of under a thousand people for when the war goes hot. Yeah, and they're... It doesn't really matter what town, as long as they drop a few off in, in any town. And boy, that's concerning because so many people still, even though it seems like a lot of people are waking up, still the majority are still asleep and they don't understand where these people are coming from, where if they did, maybe they would stand up or do a little more to push back. Well, it reminds me of an article that we quoted maybe four or five months ago, maybe it was six months now where there was a gun store owner and he was in northern texas and he got the okay to get rid of some uh, guns which could be marked like i don't know blems or seconds or something but typically you're supposed to make them inoperable and dispose of them in in, in proper way but what did he do he just threw them in a dumpster literally he just threw them in a dumpster uh some were made inoperable and others were not and could be salvaged. Now, th that to me just sounds like somebody that might be on the inside of this bigger plan that's going on. And it could surprise you. And here you have some civil unrest going on in St. Petersburg. Our friend Alois Erlmeiler, who gave us uh, some prophecies about the third WW, he did say ultimately Russia was going to have a revolution, France will have a revolution. The governments in both of those countries will be completely overthrown by the people because they will have had enough. Yeah, at some point that is going to happen all around the world. And uh, we could be seeing the beginning stages of that as people wake up and recognize, you know, hey, <laughs> it's not the average Russian citizen, it's not the average Chinese citizen, it's not, you know, it's not somebody... Uh, again, just an average person from any of the BRICS nations uh, you know, or any of the NATO nations because they've put us on this course purposely. That's the realization. 
And it's all about them implementing new and, and ever increasingly uh, 1984-ish Orwellian laws that basically take away even the smallest rights that humanity has had. Serbia, fifth week of protests against the government. Meanwhile, you have the whole Serbian Kosovo thing that can erupt at any time again. It's going to be you know, a situation of what happens. You know, if the people wake up quicker than they can implement uh, their plans, that's really you know the best case scenario. But they have all this covered. We we got to recognize they've been planning all this for a very long time. Americans pull $472 billion out of U.S. banks in three months. E yeah, that's the other aspect of this. See, you know, when all of a sudden we have the banking collapse going on, people are just going to be thinking about, you know, how do I buy food? How do I keep the utilities going on? How do I keep a roof over our head? And so many people already don't have a roof over their head. It's just a tent, <laughs> you know, if they're lucky. So that is one of the things that can be triggered. The war. What if all of a sudden, boom, you know, the war breaks out, massive attacks on Western countries, NATO nations, or however they want to trigger it. it does feel like that's what they have planned. Uh, again, then it's survival mode and everybody is just scrambling to, to keep alive. These are the things that they can pull out. What if there is something that looks like the big E, you know, that... that messy thing that happens in Africa from time to time. People have talked about Marburg. And what if that, all of a sudden, this is another thing that can all of a sudden put you into complete survival mode. And, and of course, that's well understood by the controllers. The new study destroys the doomsday glacier narrative. Today's ice eight times thicker than the last 8,000 years. And they're talking about this particular glacier down in Antarctica. Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica. It is, <laughs> they say, it actually has more ice now than 8,000 years ago, which is getting very, you know, heading closer to the last ice age, the Younger Dryas event, where so much life was just wiped off the face of the earth so quickly. And I do not think we get the straight story on that. We, we, we know we, we don't. We absolutely know we don't. Again, the, the guides have uh, given us information on, on how that really went down. And I encourage people to look to playlists. My gosh, I, I see people all the time. And it's starting to actually comment more on Twitter to people. You know, one person was saying, you know, hey, <clears throat> it's all ATs. Don't you guys realize? And, and you know, then one guy says, well, sh you know, show me the evidence. And do you have a couple thousand years? There's that much evidence. You know, do you have the rest of your life to, to look at the evidence? And obviously, you know, most people don't. But it won't even take that long to it shouldn't take that long to convince you. Uh, you know, delve into the playlist if if you want to, you know, go deeper down certain rabbit holes. And and people have talked about too, and a lot of people are picking up on intermittent fasting. And so we we are not the experts on intermittent fasting, you know, though we've done it for years. But we do have a health, diet, nutrition playlist on uh, evolutionary and EE arts with with some info to get you started on on intermittent fasting and other things. As we've shared, also, I saw one really really sad note about an 11 year old girl with brain tumor. So I just commented, please look into natural alternatives because it didn't seem like the parents were very awake, you know. And just said, look into alternatives. People have beaten that our friend Jeff beat he was told you know you, you have just a little bit of time left like what three four months no it, it's it's like what now 12 years later and and he's cancer free and he's healthier than ever and you know you know you you don't have to accept what what they tell you it's kind of like witchcraft when you get your you know, negative witchcraft, because, you know, again, that's even kind of another distortion as so many people that were labeled witches just understood natural medicine. They understand, they understood when not to eat, when to eat, which herbs can help you. You know, I guess our dear friend, naturopath Rosemary, I guess you're a witch then, Rosemary, mm -hmm. but we love you.
Interestingly enough, she has a whole lot of energy right there in her eighth house of the occult. So it doesn't surprise me that she knows exactly what's going on because a lot of her energy is poured into that part of, of life where you just have to know. You got to know all the secrets. You got to dig deep. You have to understand. Yeah, she, she's very good. Absolutely. And so, you know, thinking about what we do know from when it was colder, and this is this is showing a map of about 20,000 years ago, and really the Younger Dryas event somewhere around 12,000-ish years ago, 11,700, uh, changed everything. And I think it is echoed in, in the Sumerian stories <clears throat> when it talks about the gods basically saying we got to get our butts off of the earth right now. Uh, we're going to watch what happens from the sky. We'll be back later, guys. And they did. And that's how it <laughs> how it reads as they see the impacts come in and cause chaos and devastation. And they knew it was coming and they you know, either allowed it to happen or they even made it happen. And, you know, it resulted in, in the world that we know now. Which, you know, also, well, it, it, there's many stages on, on the way to the world that we know now because we have all sorts of resets at, at much shorter intervals than most people understand, too. It's not just every 12,000 years. There is constantly, oh, it's like pruning a tree. It, you know, and, and that's the analogy I'm going to use because we're looking at some uh, pecan trees that need to be um, given fertilizer and and pruned in order to bear fruit. Well, again, humanity is looked at as a resource, and uh, the control gr control grid believes in pruning the trees. If you understand what we mean, uh, what I mean there. And colder times, yes, uh, it was so different. And we have 410 feet less uh, ocean rise than we do now. That means so many coastal areas are, are vastly expanded, as we've said, and, and hopefully you guys can see, you know, I mean, Florida is three to four times uh, the size that it is right now. You could literally walk, you know, from what is now one Bahama Island to another. You know, many were connected pieces of one bigger landmass, as you could see. Everything, as far as the landmasses go, you know, you could walk again from, from China. You could go all the way down to Australia. It was all connected. And, you know, over here, New Zealand was many, many. It was its own continent. Uh, you yeah, know, which again has been submerged. So a very, very different world we see. And, and again, th this can happen much quicker than most people understand. And, you know, the world will be different in the future. But uh, what, we've gotten, what we've gotten from remote viewing is it's not all wiped out. You know, say let's use the, the uh, 2055 timeline. It's not all wiped out. It's not like... You know, the movies uh, 2012 where you see the Himalayas being overswept by ocean. It, it's not like that at all. The changes are are there, but they're, they're not as dramatic as that. Mm -mm. No, I, I mean, changes, yes, but that dramatic nature of things where the tsunami is wiping over the planet. Now, I, I do believe that that has happened in the past. I just don't see it in our lifetime in our living lifetime i don't see that i see um you know a lot of possibilities a lot of things that are very very frightening and that we should pay attention to but not to the point where you just take it all on yourself and fear the world no i i don't i don't think we're there i think the worst thing that we really have to worry about is taking our taking our freedom into our own hands and understanding that the future the, there's a lot of controlling entities that want to control our lives, our soul, our being. That, to me, is priority number one. Absolutely. You know, and somebody born, say, uh, in 2001, you know, 2000, let's say 2003, that's 20 years old. Realistically, if you stay outside the system, you, you might live 150, 200 years easily. 
And, and this is the reality. That's not with the technology. That's not with being assimilated into the Borg. That's just because we're going out of the dark Kali Yuga. As people start to recognize that the system isn't about giving them longevity. No, the system is about controlling them as a resource. So when we start to recognize that, yeah, when you get in harmony with the earth and you steer clear from uh, GMO foods that have little to no nutritional value and are also ladening, ladening you in many ways with substances that are going to actually be detrimental to your own DNA. This this is, you know, part of that great big awakening. And, you know, I am seeing more and more people. It's weird. It's like Twitter let the floodgates go. Now, you know, I think Elon is simply playing good cop on a good cop, bad cop paradigm. And so he's there to always dangle carrots and, and sweets in front of people's eyes. Look, you know, you can live forever. Eventually, they're going to shift from once the war is over, and then they're going to shift to um, enticements of a different way. It's not going to be necessarily all the strong arm tactics. It's going to be more along the lines of Look, you two can live forever. All you have to do is you utilize this technology by placing it in your your brain. <laughs> you know, that's going to be the next side of all this. As as Cindy has remote viewed and, and they'll show you there's more than one Elon. There's you know, they're going to explain some of the technology and everything that's going on as disclosure becomes, you know, put out there, but it'll be disclosure with a twist. So when we talked about um, Werner von Braun and his deathbed confession, uh, you know, and, and we haven't seen yet the asteroids coming down, but we have gotten from the guides that, you know, there are some big things that will probably be making impacts at some point in time, seems like. There is three of them, as has been prophesized by different people throughout time. Y yet what you have to realize is he knew that ultimately we, we are talking about extraterrestrials trying to hide themselves and, and they are the ones that are running this show. So he, he did know that. And, you know, even though he's talked about and others have talked about Project Bluebeam and a fake alien invasion, yeah, we were taken over a long time ago. That's the bottom line. Just look to the historical texts, the wars of the gods, indigenous people all over the globe recognize this. They talk about the wars in ancient India of the Asuras and the Devas. And in the Dark Age, you know, the the good guys couldn't hang out this low. <laughs> this is too low for them to go. So, you know, they can't they can't be here in the same perceptive way uh, when we are at such a low frequency because they are at such a high frequency. But that's why we use mantras to connect to them. And, and to still get their aid in, in this world while we are in the dark Kali Yuga. So, you know, of course, the, the dark controllers, as the Bible will say, Satan rules the world. So wouldn't you think that everything that we see, anything that's accepted by the masses, you know, is going to be of Satan, per se. And Satan just means the adversary. In this case, ultimate adversary is is the ai that the draconian uh beings the draco created and then it enslaved them and then they ended up uh enslaving others and the ones that we see uh the nordic aliens yes uh, you might interpret them to be pleiadians but you know cindy refers to them as the fallen pleiadians because they have been assimilated into that collective and normally, no, uh, you know, most Pleiadians that we would speak of into the, you know, in, in those terms are really fifth density beings. But, you know, again, consciousness <clears throat> can go up and consciousness can go down. Waves, everything, everything is natural. Look to, look to nature to find how things, things operate. But when I was, um, going through my awakening, you know, I, I, I went to Bible study and I really distanced myself from this question that I asked myself. I kept that question very quiet. You know, if, if Satan, Satan, if Satan is the one that rules 
this world, then why would he give us a book of truths? You know, why would this book hold all the answer? Why would he allow the Bible? You know, if, if that's one of the things that Satan rules, it's this physical thing in this 3D reality. But I shoved that question away deep inside because I didn't, I wasn't ready to hear the answer, even though my higher self already knew the answer. Absolutely. I mean, you could go to Colossians 3.22. Slaves, obey your earthly human masters, just as you would obey the mighty ones from above. <laughs> that's, that's another way of translating it. It's straight right there. And again, you know, yeah, it's spiritual warfare. What does that really mean? Well, not of this world. Well, again, this is a warf this is warfare that's going on in more than one density. So it's understanding the bigger picture. As we see a new quasi moon discovered near Earth's been traveling alongside our planet since 100 BC. They they say it's not very large, only 50 feet in diameter. Only 50 feet in diameter. And they're calling it a moon. I mean, well, maybe it's just a ship that's been sitting there. Maybe it's just some sort of satellite put into place. Again, they they laugh at this. They, they're like, okay, let's tell them it's a quasi-moon, guys. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to know that it was actually put there by, you know, the EGG or whoever. You know, again, this this is what they give us. You know, weather phenomenon. Oh, yeah, that's a red Sprite. Haven't you known that? Well, in, in reality, the term came out like in the last uh, 15 years. You know, again, they they have to cover all their bases and they make fun of us. You know, you got a talking gargoyle that says, welcome to Illuminati headquarters when you enter the De Denver airport. But the reality is, you know, that group does exist and they're just one of hundreds of groups that are controlling the whole thing there you go there you go it's okay don't worry it's okay just relax our animals will help get us through this just kind of follow their lead and you know if they ask for some extra pets just know it's very much symbiotic you both are getting love and joy from that that conversation you're having with your souls absolutely and it really truly does seem that people are waking up in droves now so this is wonderful keep spreading keep spreading these videos and others that other people are putting out like this you know keep sharing what you know with others keep waking up the world because we need to wake this world up before uh, they shift into that next mode indeed as always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. If you need to make an appointment for energy work, spiritual counseling, uh, just reach out evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.